Yeah, <laughs> such a creep. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. It's a good angle. I like that. It's a good angle. It really is so powerful. Um, and, and I think so much of the fat experience is intertwined in diet culture and the messaging to shrink yourself and take up less space. And I also didn't know I was allowed to not diet. Like, I think that's like what the message is. Like, if you're fat, you just need to be on a diet so you're not fat. I feel like we've uh, gone off the deep end a little bit with all these podcasts. I don't know why everybody has to have one. And these people are very boring. I don't know why I have to watch your guys' podcast. And every single time I do, I'm just thinking, you guys never talk about anything other than this. Or you guys always talk about the fact that you're always so disappointed in yourselves and how everybody else is disappointed in you. But you guys don't care about that, which doesn't make any sense. At this point... I just wouldn't be surprised if there was a podcast on which cheeseburgers were the best cheeseburgers. And it was like episode 4,000. It's like, how many cheeseburgers are there? Or like a podcast on what spider is more scary. And I bring that up because literally a few minutes ago, before I recorded this video, there was a giant spider right here on my wall. And I was very scared. It was horrific for me. Um, and I think that certain spiders are more scary than others. Luckily, this spider was, you know, it was a giant, it was a giant white spider. I mean, God forbid it was a black one, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, but it was uh, a giant spider. And I think if we're going to have fat acceptance podcasts, we need a podcast on spiders. We need a, a podcast on different coffees and why we should drink them. And then also, I think, personally speaking, we should have an entire podcast on what barbecue sauces are more appropriate to lick off of women's feet at a given point in time. I truly believe that, and I think that if we're doing ourselves a big disservice by not coming out with these podcasts, and uh, also the double chin is unbelievable. Existing yeah. as fat was it never it never was an option. Yeah, because nobody wants you. Look, if you want to exist as a fat person, go ahead. There are people that want to like cut off their legs and stuff, or like that woman like blinded herself because she's like, I'm deep down, I identify as a blind person. Like, if you want to do that stuff to yourself. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's something that I would do personally, but we do have a thing called free will to a certain degree, obviously, and you can't just sprout wings, which is a stupid thing. I, I know a lot of people that go, technically, we don't have free will, so I can't, like, sprout wings. Nobody thinks like that. Nobody ever thought, I don't have free will because I can't sprout wings and just start, like, majestically beating myself off with no hands. Nobody's thinking that, okay? What we mean by free will is, like, you can make your own decisions and you can live whatever with whatever decisions that you want to, to a certain degree or another. If you want to be fat, you can, if that's what you want to do. I mean, I guess there's worse things, but it's just such a bizarre thing to want to be fat. Like, there's almost nothing good about it at all. Like, you guys are going to have issues for the rest of your life. And you know what? I'm literally seeing a lot of issues right now. I don't even know where your chin is, is uh, maybe that's the bottom one or probably the top one. I don't know. I mean, if you're okay with not having a neck for the rest of your life, then it's fine. Um, if you're okay with literally struggling to get out of bed, if you're okay with if you ever fall on the floor, which is something that's going to happen. Last night when I was on stream, I fell on the floor, okay? I was able to get up because I have legs and I use them frequently. But if you're fat, you just got to live there. Like if you fall on the floor, it's done. Like that's kind of where you live for the rest of your life. Unless you have big strapping gentlemen that are totally fine with blowing out their back for the rest of their life to pick you up. Then that's your house. That's where you live. You're never going to do anything ever again. You better hope your phone was down there on a charger because otherwise you're never going to eat again, which might be a good thing. But anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think anything that continues to do that work and spread that message is your, your message is literally just don't do anything like your message is literally I didn't know that I could literally just be sedentary like for all of my life people were telling me this was bad and this is not good and it was actually hurting me and I thought no. I am actually okay with this. I'm okay with doing nothing. I'm okay with struggling. I'm okay with all of these problems. I'm okay with being fat. I'm okay with being voluptuous and having big giant armpits across my body. I'm okay with smelling like must butter for the rest of my life. If that's okay for you, that's fine. But I would never say that it was like brave or badass. Who even says that? Like, oh yeah, bro, guess what? Guess what I did last night? Guess what I did last night? I was driving on the highway going 120. Or like, hey bro, guess what? I, I was like batting at a, a practice and I hit a ball that was like, it flew out of the pack. It's so badass, right? And then this one person comes out of nowhere. Yeah, I exist as a fat person. I'm so badass. Um, I don't know if that's in the same category. I don't even know who invited this woman. Who, <laughs> how'd you even get through the door? The door is very narrow. Uh, the, the hallway is very small. How'd you get up here? This we're on the fourth floor. <laughs> we don't even have elevator access. What, how did you get, do you have wings? How did you get up here? That would be the question that I would be asking, but 
I would never say that it was badass to be fat. It's literally just you doing nothing. I, it's literally just living a sedentary lifestyle. Uh, but okay, sure. Hashtag your badass for being fat, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think anything that continues to do that work and spread that message is just so badass. And this is why I think we've lost a lot of like the plot nowadays, dude. I mean, we literally just had a woman right there telling you that it's badass to just do nothing. I Is that really badass? I've never seen that before in my life. Like, I was thinking about Hugh Jackman the other day because he's such a gorgeous man. But there was a, a moment in X-Men uh, Wolverine Origins, right? Bad movie. But anyway, um, he came through the door or, like, he was, like, walking away from this giant explosion or whatever. And I thought that was badass because there was a big explosion behind him and he looks really good. And he had a leather jacket and all. That's really badass. Now, if I were to say that you existing as a fat person was equally or in the same caliber of badassery, I just think that's doing a disservice to that movie scene. And I also think that there are other moments in life that are also very badass, kind of like, um, you know, when people donate a lot of money or people do extraordinary things, like, for instance, run, like, you know, like people running across the country without ever stopping or doing some extraordinary things. Or like that one, sh that one guy in Russia that beat his meat, uh, you know, 74 times and died. That's badass. Existing as a fat person, I just can't really, I don't, uh, nah, I, I'm gonna die on this hill. I don't think it's badass. I think it's actually the opposite of badass. I think it's sad. I think it's uh, disappointing. I think it's very bizarre. And I also think that it's uncomfortable to the nose. But if you want to exist as a fat person, like, you know, I, go ahead, I guess. Like, all, all more power to you, I guess, dude. But can we at least acknowledge that it's not good? Like, it's a little unhealthy, you know? Can we do that at least, the bare minimum? heavy physically and mentally and i think a lot of people don't understand it and they see people that are bigger and they think oh it's not that hard just you know eat less move. it is very hard to be fat and this is most definitely eat less move more is the definitive way to lose weight i don't know why these people always want to overcomplicate it because it's really not that complicated there might be some people that have a harder time moving more and eating less sure but it really does come down to that we live in a very very great time to be alive nowadays so great matter of fact that most people find themselves sitting down or laying down or they're in a transitional period where they're doing those things so maybe you're working and then you walk to the car where you sit down and then you're sitting in that car driving to your house where you walk a few steps to get into your house to sit down. A lot of people are literally just doing that. Back in the day, it was not like that. Back in the day, it was you had to walk for 44 years. And then maybe on the 45th year, you died of sedentary. You, you, you died of like diarrhea or something like that. So, you know, overall, you were pretty much walking for your entire life and you had to. And um, I'm not saying that's a, I'm not saying that's a, you know, a better situation. Obviously, nowadays, it's way better. I would much rather um, live in a life where I could just sit down 24-7 than have to, you know, like literally walk around for hours upon hours on end and hopefully uh, don't die from exhaustion or have to sell one of my children to facilitate the, the sustenance, the food that we're going to eat for the rest of the year because the potato famine got us again. And, you know, uh, oh, no, my daughter, she she's, you know, she's a she, she's a witch. And, you know, we're going to have to kill her because she said th extra three words and she knows how to do math. So we're going to have to actually kill her this time. It's sad, but it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you guys. It is what it is. Sorry. And by the way, yes, my wife. She died when she was, I don't know what to tell you guys, okay? She had 15 children and died on the operating table. I don't know what to tell you. Yes, they didn't use gloves. They don't know what medicine is yet, okay? I'm sorry. But that's what it was. Um, it was a terrible time to be alive. But here we are in 2024. It's it's badass to be fat. Where are we? How do we get here? You know, how do we get here, dude? Uh, why got, Why can't you guys just, like, not be fat? Why, got, why do you guys get, like, brag about it? Like, yeah, it's so great to be fat. And then you guys, like, cry the next day because you're fat. I don't know. It seems like an emotional roller coaster in more than one way. More, it's such an oversimplification. It's so nuanced and complex. To really it's it's a it's more it's nuanced. I'll give them that. It's a little nuanced. There is a lot to losing weight, but I feel like a lot of these people do say this to try to not lose weight. I, I do see this phenomena quite a bit. They try to make it seem like it's a lot more complicated than it actually is because guess what? If something's really complicated, then that's actually a reason to not do it because if it's really hard, if the barrier to entry is really difficult, then most people are not gonna do it. Like I see a lot of people when they go to the gym, what are they doing? They're going, I need to buy workout equipment. I need to buy gloves. I need to buy certain clothes. I need to make sure that I get the headbands. I, you know what? Let me buy the protein powder, the creatines. And what happens is, they invest so much money and they figure out, 
they don't want to do it anymore. And now you just invested so much money into going to the gym and you made it so complicated when the reality of it is you don't need any of that. You're supposed to look like shit when you go to the gym. You're supposed to look like ass when you leave the gym. It's not supposed to be a place where you go in and dress to like the nines, dude. By the time you get out of there, you're going to look like a swamp monster. So you might as well just make sure that you're going in with garbage. Like, why does it matter, dude? But I see a lot of people over dramatizing it. And I see a lot of people too that want to lose weight and they invest in like cardio machines for like $1,000 and it just like perpetually sit, sits in the corner of their room for decades and it just acquires dust. The only thing sitting on that is dust. And it's really sad because a lot of people get dissuaded by that because they find out they're not that type of person or whatever. That's why I always say like if you're going to go to the gym, if you're going to lose weight, don't jump into the deep end. Don't invest all this money. Don't try to be like these like these top 1% people that that do go to the gym every single day and they invest a lot of stuff. These guys are weird, okay? You're not weird. You're normal. You're going to go to the gym three, four times a week, and you're only going to be there for like 30 to an hour. That's okay. The same thing with eating, okay? You're not going to just completely upend your entire diet. You're just going to cut out certain things, and you're going to ensure that you're eating better. That's all I ask. That's all anybody's ever asking. Nobody's asking you to go to the gym for 10 hours a day. Nobody's asking you to go on a calorie deficit of three calories. Nobody's saying that, okay? We're just asking if you're eating 5,000 calories a day, can we get you 45? Can we get you to 45? And maybe by that next, like, two months later, maybe 40? Maybe 4,000? Can we get you 4,000? Is that okay? Can we do that? No? We'll work with it. Work with it. That's all we want. We don't want you to overcomplicate it. It doesn't have to be as dramatic as it is. And keep in mind, the reason why they do this is because they want to make it seem like it's way crazier than it actually is. It's really not. It's like, I remember one time I was talking to this girl, and she was like, it's, like, really hard to suck dick. And I was like... Are you lying to me right now? Like, we only have one function. It's not hard. I could do it. Like, I don't think I've ever had a bad fellatio in my entire life, okay? Uh, but I know for a fact I've given bad head to women, mo mostly because of the women. It's not my fault. You have to tell me what I'm doing. I don't understand anything that's going on down here. You have to tell me what's going on. If I go down there and I'm just basically just putting my face directly onto it and just Tell me what to do. I don't know what I'm doing. Where is it, okay? Why are all these things happening? With, with penis, it's like one thing. Go up and down with your mouth. For vagina, it's like every girl is different. Why are there different functions to it? I don't know. You guys are just dynamic. And I'm just sitting here. It's like the way I like to look at it is... You, you ever watch those old old TV with the antennas, right? And you have to like you have to like move the antennas to try to get the signal right. That's what it's like when you're down there giving fellatio to a woman. You have to just basically move your mouth in certain areas and just look up and just ensure that you're doing something correctly. And if you're just doing like this and you don't get any response and you go over here, don't get any response, go down here. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm just gonna do that for the next 25 minutes. And it's always long. Uh, if you ever give a fellatio to a dude, I'm done. I'm, I'm already done. Like, you just asking me if I want it, I'm done. But for women, it's like, can you eat me out for three hours? No. I have lockjaw, and I have work, and I also have to do other things. What do you, like, We were, I thought we were making lasagna. Like, what do you, can you just, like, drink iced tea or something? It's always weird, man. Reasons why people in bigger bodies, it might be hormonal, it might be that they- Ah, uh, you know, the reason why a lot of these people have hormonal issues is because they're fat. I just wanted to point that out because it turns out when you're very, very fat, your hormones are perpetually fucked. So nuanced and complex the reasons why people in bigger bodies, it might be hormonal, it might be that they've got an eating disorder. Some people are just bigger. Eh, I think that the idea of like some people just being bigger is kind of like a crazy cop out, dude. It's a crazy cope. I think there are people that look better bigger. I know that there are some like Samoan dudes I know or some bigger guys that just kind of look good bigger you know bigger dudes i know some dudes that are literally like six two six three and they walk around like solid 250 they're good looking guys they got a little bit of gut but they're thicker they're a thicker dude and they have no problem getting women they have no problem operating in society yes they're technically obese yes they have technically like maybe some problems and things like that i always encourage them to lose weight but it's not that big of a deal for a lot of these guys they're just kind of bigger dudes sure to one degree or another i would never advocate for somebody to be these sizes right i don't really like it when people just kind of you know demote themselves to i'm just a big guy or i'm just a big girl you're really not and if you like i would never advocate for somebody to not do what they want to do do what you want to do i just hope you make the right decisions and sometimes those right decisions are very nuanced it could be different for different cir cir circumstances and people of course but almost any circumstance you look at being overweight is almost never a benefit anyway um and i think there's a lot of judgment out there yes there's a lot of judgment people are judging everybody all the time for literally everything 
I'm judging you right now because I'm not looking at your mouth. Can you like move the microphone a little bit over to the side a little bit? Um, but I think, you know, saying to someone, I'll just eat less is like saying to, to someone with depression, I'll just cheer up. It's not really the same because depression is literally, oh, it's such a bad, oh, it's such a bad representation, dude. It's really not a good representation at all. Uh, depression is literally not something we know much about. Like, I'm pretty sure depression is not just easily solved. Like, it's 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 something into, it's like internally, right? Uh, that's the way I've been explained. Like, for a long time, I didn't even believe depression exists. But obviously, it exists. I know this now. I've been through it. I've met many people that have been through it. And it's just a suck dick chowder, dude. It's always bad. It's never good. But being overweight is literally very changeable. Like, I've been through times in my life where I was just losing weight chronically because I just forgot to eat. And I would do that for a long time because I, I just never was hungry or I just didn't care about it. I was just like, I don't want to eat. For me personally, if I didn't have to eat, I just wouldn't do it because I, I just don't like it. I don't like eating personally. I just like existing. And hopefully one day we can like make a magic pill and I can swallow that pill and I'll just be satiated. But until then, I'm going to have to eat like chicken tenders and mashed potatoes and all this other stuff. Like it's good to eat. It's good to put stuff in your mouth and it feels good sometimes. But eh, not really for me personally. But I think the more apt description for this or the more apt like if you were to compare the two things between eating less and something else, I would be like the equivalent of, oh, my car is empty. So fill it up. It's the same thing there. Like it, it, that's really what it is. What you're basically doing is like you're taking your car and you're just stacking on weights. Like you're just stacking on perpetual weights. And if you eat less, that means that the weights take off your car. Uh, there is a changeable thing, okay? It's something that you can actually do something about. Whereas uh, a depression, I don't think there's anything you could do about it with the exception of maybe going to your doctor and hopefully you can get prescribed something, hopefully. But um, for obesity or fatness, it's really up to you. Like, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, you want to be thinner, then it's up to you. It's not as easy as that. And we shouldn't be saying that. Um, I've got a, my favorite phrase. I always say, if I'm not sitting on your face and you're not paying my mortgage what I weigh, what I look like is none of your business. That's not really the case, honestly speaking, because you're like on a public platform and you're bestowing upon me your beliefs and your existence. So I'm looking upon you and I'm judging you and I'm, t I'm hearing your voice. I just don't understand why a lot of people will say this bullshit. Like if I'm not sitting on your face and paying my rent, dude, that's not really the case. Like, okay, first of all, dude, you're putting yourself in a pu very public eye. Obviously, the words that you say have value because you're bestowing upon it as if it's gospel. I'm going to be listening to those words and I'm going to be judging those words critically. Therefore, that doesn't make sense. No, uh, you don't have to be sitting on my face or paying my rent or whatever the hell you said in order for me to take your words at with judgmental value or whatever. Like, what are you talking about? So I can't like judge you. None of the stuff that you just said is any of my business, even though you're literally telling me it is. How does that make any sense at all? That doesn't make any sense. That's like somebody stabbing me and going, bro, shut up, dude. Why? Why are you complaining right now? Don't judge me for this, bro. It's like what I want to do, dude. Just get the fuck off me, bro. I know that like I'm affecting you right now, but hop off me. Suck me off, dude. You're a fucking weirdo. Get away from me, dude. Like, dude, you're literally talking about it right now. How is it none of my business? On your face and you're not paying my mortgage. What I weigh. I also think it's like really overrated to have people sit on your face. It's cool in the moment when you go, oh yeah, sit on my face, sit on my face. But depending on the angle, you're getting butthole right in your fucking eye sockets. And... I'm always like super concerned that somebody might fart and then I have pink eye and then I have to go to my doctor and explain how it happened. And you're like, oh, well, like what the hell happened, dude? Like what, what did you do? My girlfriend farted in my eye while I was like, while she was sitting on my mouth. I don't know what to fucking tell you, bro. Like why are you being so judgmental right now, man? Get off me right now, okay? Just give me a fucking prescription for some, I don't know, ibuprofen or like Advil or something. Like I rub in my eye sockets to get rid of this fart infection or whatever. Obviously it's never happened to me. Uh, but I have told girls right before, don't do it. Like, don't fart in my face. I'm not trying to do that shit. I don't want any of that shit to transpire. And then I'm always like kind of, I don't really like it sometimes. Like, I think in the, in the idea of it's probably better than the actual execution of it, if that makes any sense, you know? Like, you feel like you want to do it. And then when you're in the act, you're like, oh, I was lying. <laughs> I'll, I'll still do it because I know that I told you I was going to. I'm not a bitch. But now that I'm here... I don't want to do it anymore, and it's always like that. Like, every single time, right after, I'm like, dude, I'm down for this, dude. Let's fucking do it, you know? Like, let's do this shit. And then you're there, and you're like, this is gross. Like, you're disgusting. You're This is absolutely abominable. And this is why I always say, you shouldn't be a woman that wants to eat a man's ass, because can you imagine literally having a man sit on your face, dude? Nutsack on your fucking neck? Bro, <laughs> that would be crazy, bro. I couldn't even imagine that hair all over the place. That shot, listen, dude. You think dudes are washing them down themselves down there is crazy, bro. It's never gonna happen. At least women wipe.
I look like it's none of your business. <laughs> hell yes. No, it's not hell yes. You guys are literally just yes men. She just said literal just bullshit. What are you talking about? What I look like is none of your business. Uh, first of all, my eyes, my eyes are gazing upon you right now. If I want to make a judgment based off that, a lot of people might think I'm an asshole, but I do judge people. I do like look upon other people and go, that person looks like a squid. That person looks like a reindeer. That person looks like a bag of potatoes. I don't know what to tell you, bro. It is what it is. I, am I a bad person? Probably, probably a bad person. But overall, I think I'm pretty good. I think most people think they're pretty good people. But I, I do 100% judge people, probably a little bit more than most. And I love creating stories in my head about what this person's life is about and creating voices and talking them to my head about like what they're actually doing. And if you're ever going out with me, it's always like that. It's always, uh, you know, like we were talking about obviously how much I care about you and how great your smile is. And I really appreciate the fact that you take care of your skin and stuff like that. That's great, by the way. I really love that. Your eyebrows are very well contoured. I could tell that you took care of them very, very well. I also really really enjoy that is that a crop top wow that's a really nice crop top hey look at that guy over there he's fat oh wow what do you think his life is like probably smells like what onions i don't know but anyway doesn't matter we love it that's no, i just i really hate like this, she didn't actually say anything of value she just kind of said like i just don't want people to look at me and now we're all like flipping out over the fact that she said something that was just so incredibly normal like hey i just don't want people to judge me oh my god that's so crazy way what i look like is none of your business hell yes we love it that's good we love it that's good why is it good you guys are fucking boring as hell dude open your eyes there's like a reel i did recently and it went viral and some people think, think going viral see like i love this too because she said like mind your own business right but then she sits here and goes but i went viral so let me ask you a question really quickly, right? When you went viral, uh, did you just tell people to mind their own business? What was the purpose of posting yourself online if you just wanted people to like mind their business about whatever the fuck you were saying? I just don't really understand. Like, what are you talking about? Like, how does that even make any sense? And of course you could sit there and go, no, David, she said, she said, uh, mind your business about her body. Sure, but you do realize that like if you're posting yourself, like obviously you guys can comment on my body. I'm wearing a Darth Vader shirt. It doesn't fit properly. It's an old shirt. I don't shop. Okay, I don't like buying clothes. Judge me, please. Tell me how disgusting I look today. Tell me about how my mustache is asymmetrical and that my teeth are kind of turning yellow in the background, okay? Please, go ahead. But the point I'm making is when you're putting yourself in a public place, it's one thing to be on the street and get offended that somebody was like, hey, you look fucking weird. You kind of look like a an old spaghetti. I don't like that. I don't like the way you look. There, you, you got hot sauce on your neck. I don't like that's weird. Get the fuck out of here. Like, that would be one thing. But if you're on the internet and you're posting yourself, you can't not expect people to say things about you. It's just what it is. Like, you're putting yourself in a very public format. Like, you're literally putting yourself out there in a public way. You have to be willing to accept that there are people going to be judging you. So, it's just a weird thing to be like, oh, yeah, just like, don't, like, don't judge me. And like, don't, don't say anything mean to me. And then proceed to make videos that go viral. Like, maybe that wasn't your intention, but then again, why are you posting them on the internet then, dude? Good. There's like a reel I did recently and it went viral. And so people think, think going viral is brilliant and it's not, it's horrible because it goes on the wrong side of the Oh my inside. god. Oh. You have to be prepared to accept that there's going to be some backlash for it. And if your words are valuable, if you think that what you're saying is true, why don't you like talk to people about it then? Like, if you thought you were right, then make a follow-up video, talk to the people that you thought were maybe... But this woman actually makes me very uncomfortable because I don't see a jawline and it's actually uh, like there's nothing like there's nothing. There's no indentation or anything like that. It's so scary. But I actually got to look, stop looking at her for a second. But there's a lot of people that are going to disagree with you about literally anything. Like you can probably just say, I think personally uh, drinking water is very good for you. There's going to be people that are going to disagree with you. I mean, there's literally people that think that world is flat. So there's that. You have to be prepared to defend yourself, okay? If you're going to put anything out on the internet, I hope, I hope, I hope. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to say that you're wrong. It's okay to say that you made a mistake, okay? But if you think that what you're saying is true or right or justified, then talk about it. And hopefully when somebody says, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense, you're prepared to sit there and go, well, actually, let me tell you why you're wrong. And then have a conversation about it instead of just complaining that people are taking your content and using it in the way that you don't want it to be. Defend yourself. So people think, think going viral was brilliant and it's not. It's horrible because it goes on the wrong side. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <But> it, no. <laughs> it was... Bro, this fucking podcast is useless, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If they're not yes-queening, they're just ad-libs. It's about a comment that I got saying stop promoting obesity. And that's something that I don't know if you guys get, but I get all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just literally responded with, like, I'm not promoting obesity. I'm just fat and don't hate myself. Yeah. Yep. So you're implying that 
so you implying that your most fat people don't like most fat people do hate themselves like what are you saying exactly like and that resonated with so many like women because i think that's yeah that's the one negative i would say like the, the, for me is uh, that's the one that hurts not when people are like you fat cow die i've had death i've had all sorts and not so they don't bother me but they kind of just like oh, i'm like grow up i mean it is what it is you will get threats i did have a dude one time on instagram threatened to suck me off i i never thought that that would be like i never sometimes you you get comments and you're like what why this is such a weird thing you know like the dude literally hit me up it was like hey man i like your shit and i was like oh man thanks and he was like you want me to like hey dude you want to like you are you gay and i was like no he said listen i want to suck you off i'm good i'm totally fine but thanks i'm gonna suck you off i'm good i'm literally fine and then it was like where do you live i'm gonna do it like i am my mouth is open right now like i'm prepared i'm actually like downing three bottles of water right now to give you that deluxe shit where are you like we can meet up somewhere right now my mouth is open literally and i was like uh bro uh what are you talking about i'm good dude i'm like totally i'm not gay i'm not gay he was like i know it's okay though and i was like it's not no you can't say it's okay you can't just first of all you can't threaten to suck me off that's really gay and then also uh to sit there and imply that it's not gay for me to receive fellatio from you it would is kind of crazy. Of course, it's gay, bro. If I accepted the lips from a man, that would be indeed homosexual. But uh, I'm not gay, so I had to block him because like he wasn't getting it to, through his head. Like I wasn't trying to get sucked off by a man. Sorry, dude. Uh, but I'm not trying to really get sucked off by anybody. Like I'm not really going out of my way to find people that are willing to open their mouth and give me that sweet lips. Like I'm not trying to do that. But there was this one time I did hit up this prostitute. That was a man. Uh, or maybe a transgender, but this is way back before transgenders were cool. And it was like a prostitute on a dating app or whatever. And this woman was talking about she was going to give the uh, sloppy neck sandwiches and stuff like that. Like she was fully prepared. And I hit her up. I wasn't like actually trying to get the sloppy neck sandwich or whatever she was giving out. But um, she was charging like $30 for the sloppy head special. And I was like, oh, uh, where are you located? She was like, oh, I'm over here. And I was like, are you free tonight? And then she said, yes, I'm free tonight. And I said... Oh, that's so great. Thank you. I, I thank God. I mean, I, I thought I had to pay. You know, I thought I had to thank God that you're free tonight. So where can we meet? And I, then she blocked me. I thought that was hilarious, though, because like the implication of that was because I asked her if she's free. And she thought like I meant, are you free as in like, are you not doing anything right now? But I actually meant, are you free as in do I have to pay for the sloppy head special? And she got upset and it was funny. And she was also like, listen, dude. If I'm not denying your humanity, if you want to be a transgender or you want to be like a, a um, uh, like a man that's like posted up as a woman or whatever, dude, and you don't got like an egg sac or a functioning vagina or whatever, I don't, I'm not denying your humanity. Like, obviously, if you want to identify as a transgender, can we just like try a little bit harder, dude? Like, this person almost had a full beard and that was like their profile picture. And I was like, dude, like, this is fucking crazy, bro. Like, I'm not trying to get sucked off and ha have the itches going on. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you got stubble. That's not it. I'm not trying to do that shit. All I'm saying is, if you're prepared to sell mouth, make it deluxe. You can't just be out here selling lips and you got stubble on the side of your neck. I'm not trying to have that shit go down, bro. I don't know if you guys have ever had sex with a woman that had a little bit of uh, peach fuzz on there. It's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. Sometimes I think, am I okay? Like, I remember I was having sex with this girl, and I pulled out, and I was like, am I bleeding? Like, I don't even know if this is, but I'm a man, so I'm going to keep going. But obviously, as I was doing it, like, my head was next to her head, so she couldn't see my face. But the entire time, I was just like this. <sighs> it was so bad. It was so uncomfortable. But I, I powered through it. Can't stop me. But the yeah. ones when I say you're promoting obesity, as if I'm literally down in, you know, in the high street with a big banner saying this way to mcdonald's and no you're not saying that but you're also saying a whole bunch of hogwash like you're literally promoting this particular activity right like you're on this podcast you're talking about it as if it's good i'm sure that nobody said stop promoting obesity as in like you just existing as a fat person i don't think many people think that just because you you exist as a fat person therefore you're promoting obesity i don't think many people think that i'm pretty sure that they probably meant the fact that you went viral for a clip that you were talking about probably had to do with obesity or being fat and you were promoting it and they decided hey uh you're promoting obesity that's like really not good and you took it the wrong way or you're purposely taking it the wrong way to make it seem like they're dumb when I mean, they're probably not dumb they probably had a valid reason to say that and you're just gaslighting us to believe that they're just stupid when in reality you're the stupid one Let, please yeah. like, you look like me everyone yeah. must look, i'm not saying that i'm just like i'm just big 
Listen. I just want people to see, like, if you just say I'm just big, I got to keep it a buck with you. That is promoting obesity because you're like purposely being ignorant about the fact that you're eating more than what you should be eating. And that's making you fat. Okay. See, like, that's the issue here. You're literally telling us that these people were going, oh, no, they were just totally wrong. Like, I'm not just promoting obesity. I'm not just telling people to go to McDonald's or whatever. But, like, I'm just big. That's ridiculous. That's actually, like, fucking retarded. Are you serious? You literally just disproved your own point in your own sentence about how you were trying to disprove what they were saying about you. <laughs> All right, dude, you got it. Totally good. You got it. <laughs> Listen, I've tried to be smart. I've tried every single diet. They don't work. They're top. Fine. Uh, you tried every single diet and they all don't work. I somehow don't believe that. Toxic, that absolutely awful diet culture. And then again, to sit here and be like, oh, I just don't know why they think I'm promoting obesity. Like, all I'm doing is existing. But anyway, all diets are bad. They're toxic. They're just terrible. They're disgusting. Losing weight is awful. I, are you stupid? Like, are, why are you, what is up with you? Um, can you, like, please be consistent at, like, you can't just be sitting here trying to gaslight everybody into thinking that everybody else is wrong and then say straight up, very, very extremist shit like you just did. What the hell are you talking about, dude? Are you actually deranged right now? Everything you just said was dumb. Literally everything. You just told me that everybody is wrong for why they believe that you're promoting obesity because you implied that they thought that you were promoting obesity because you're just existing as a fat person. And then you said all of that. You're dumb. It's horrendous. It's horrific. What? By the way, if you want to do a diet, don't just jump into like one of the fad diets or just like, you know, go on a 1500 calorie deficit is not good. Okay. Slow and steady. It's so wrong. We're just going, Hey, I'm in the body. I am like, like it or don't follow me. Like that's really crazy, bro. This woman is actually atrocious. Uh, it's so, it's so crazy to me how so many people can say the most ridiculous, the most blatantly ignorant, the most D destructible uh, sentences ever and then people have no issue with it because they say it in a nice way you are saying actually terrible stuff right now and you're acting as though it's not terrible it is terrible and by the way i'm sick of you gaslighting people into believing that you're not in the wrong you're in the wrong and you're also dumb that's literally where i'm at yeah yeah I feel say like the... louder girl <laughs> say what louder dude who is this woman dude i hate this girl I hate this woman so hard, bro. Why are you even on this show? You don't contribute anything. All you do is go, you're just ad libs. We don't even need you, okay? We'll just get a soundboard. We'll just get a soundboard and anytime somebody says something, it will just say, slay. Oh my God. You go, girl. We'll just have that. We don't need you. You're not contributing anything, okay? <laughs> say it louder. <laughs> I feel like the whole glorifying obesity thing it just means that we're out here in fat bodies living pretty glamorous lives. Yeah, but that's literally not what she's saying. She actually just said something completely opposite of that. And you're actually dumb for bringing up a random point. And also, the makeup on your cheeks right now is extraordinarily dark in comparison to everything else on your face. Please, for the love of God, blend correctly. It's too thick. You cake that shit on. Okay? And yes, everything that you're saying right now is completely fucking irrelevant. You're so fucking stupid everybody on this podcast is dumb uh, please invite me on invite anybody that has differing opinions please buying <laughs> obesity thing it just means that we're out here in fat bodies living pretty glamorous lives <laughs> and like yeah. stay mad last week you you brought did you not hear anything that that woman just said like she literally said all diets are toxic all diets are bad they're never going to be good for you and she tried every single one of them therefore she knows they're all bad and you just said yeah it's like we're just living great lives. Like, we're just fat. We're just existing. That's not what she said. That's literally not what she said. And she just said it like 20 seconds before you said that. Are you actually stupid? Everybody on this fucking podcast is irrelevant. Please get rid of that fat girl with no neck. Get rid of her. Replace her with a soundboard. You two, get off the show. I want the other girl that makes weird faces. That's all I want. After we left our body image session. Yeah. All right, we went. Bro, what is a body image session? What is that like you just standing around like four-way mirrors and just admiring the folds? And had dinner together. And we talked. No I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Look at our bodies. Tell each other how great our bodies are. Which, by the way, uh, listen. <laughs> I know that women can say this. I know that women can go, we had a body image session, which is crazy, by the way. I have no idea what that is. But if, if a whole bunch of dudes, if there was three dudes in a room together and they said on camera, we had a body image session, everybody thinks they're gay. Literally every single person, every dude, everybody that's watching that goes, so you guys sucked each other off. You guys were literally admiring each other's physiques. You probably licked his abs, okay? You fellatioed him while that was going on. And then you went out to eat afterwards. 
gay everything about this is gay and you know what there's already a 20 percent chance that if you go out to dinner with with your guys there's a 20 percent chance that you might be gay doing that and that's just a passive that you're gonna have to roll with and it's just it's just a roll of the dice rng whatever you want to call it you might be gay when you leave that that dinner i've never went on dates with men before so i'm never running the risk of being gay because i'm not gay i only love women women anatomy is delicioso i do not like penis Week after we left our body image session yeah all right we went and had dinner together her hair is wow bad. last week after we left our body image session not this woman yeah. all right. oh damn what happened all right we went and had dinner together and we talked no cameras no nothing and we had one of the most heartfelt conversations we've had about body image sometimes i think women do have really good conversations but then i hear this and i go i don't i don't think so i don't think so dude because i've had conversations with my guy friends and we have we've had deep conversations but most of the time they just kind of devolve into what kind of tooth floss are you using oh you're not using any tooth floss you're gay or i don't know it just always ends up like that some of the things so maybe you guys are having better conversations than us this is sad made me nervous to talk about what my body used to be and what my body is now. Melissa talked about how she has body dysmorphia. I just think it's interesting that these people are so confident within themselves and they go, yes, queen, we're fat and proud, but I'm so insecure about my body. I'm so insecure about how I look now. I just, uh, I don't know if people are gonna accept me. Like, dude, you know, you're just like, can we please like have some consistency here? Like, what is going on right now, dude? Are you confident or are you not confident? I, I was concerned that Alyssa thought that she was, that she's having that same experience as I had then. And I needed Alyssa to know that it wasn't. And I needed Alyssa to know that it wasn't. Do you guys talk about, like, anything else? Is there anything else on the menu, dude? Like, man, this sounds like a depressing-ass time. Like, can you guys talk about, like, I don't know, iced tea? Can you guys, like, talk about oh, drywall? Uh, uh, dude, talk about the Olympics or, like, camels. I don't know anything, bro. Because I needed her to understand the, how different my access was then. So I, I asked her, I said, when I, when I talk about my body before I decide to have surgery, do you imagine it to be similar to your body now? And your answer was... You know it's not factually. Yeah. But you also feel like it is, right? Like yeah. It's hard for you to separate it. You feel like you're... Well, I feel like I'm struggling with... I don't like this woman. I just... I'm sorry. Every time I look at her, I'm always... She kind of looks like Danny DeVito a little bit from The Penguin. Some of those things. Again, yeah. again, can acknowledge right. you from crying? a very different place. I'm struggling right now with... Dude, uh, we're getting deep. We're getting real deep. I think this woman's on the brink of tears. And all that other woman asked her was, uh, do you, like, feel the same way that I felt about my body when I was, like, really uncomfortable? And then she goes, yes. Oh, my Moving God. Moving my body and, like. Who's watching this? Like, who's who's tuning in being like, oh, I can't wait for. Who's this woman? Marissa? I, I don't know. Like, who's tuning in and be like, I can't wait till Marissa, like, opens up again. Why are you even wearing a necklace? Why even bother? Feeling good. I have a neck and accessibility that's like wearing a bracelet when you don't have an arm because i literally wasn't allowed to what yeah. are you talking about dude you guys are fucking victims for no reason for a year and a half yeah. right so like i yeah when you don't move your body for a year and a half it takes a little right. bit to get it going again right, right? i know that that is different mm -hmm. than not being able to right some of the stuff that i was struggling with was mobility right yeah and so when you're hearing me talk about <laughs> Like, that woman is, like, going through it. And this woman just, like, completely feels like, yeah, but anyway, about me. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, dude. Just, like, this woman is literally on the brink of, of like, mental collapse, right? <laughs> and that fucking woman just goes, like, anyway, yeah, like, anyway, like, I was saying. Able to. Like, peep it. Right. Some of the stuff that I was struggling with was mobility, right? Yeah. And so when you're hearing me talk about some mobility issues I was having, and then you're like, well, I'm having some mobility issues, right? Yeah. It's hard to... You know, you would have uh, less of those mobility issues if you just weren't fat, right? I'm it's assuming. hard to process. And you didn't know me at my largest size, right? Um, but one of the reasons I wanted to talk to Alyssa about it was because it oh, was Alyssa. important to me to feel seen and understood that my body at that point was a very different body. I spent 10 plus years of my life in a super fat body at a size 30-ish. And that that Damn. had major impacts on my experience of life. And that I, I know, I know what it is to walk around this world as a super fat. When I share some stories of my fatness, they might not be able to understand that I've had different experiences yeah. than to now. So that was a conversation we had, and you were really honest and beautifully vulnerable with me, you know? And yeah. and I do feel like 
we both were able to be understood. I don't think we're there. I think that's, this is a fucking, wow. Uh, man, I don't know what to tell you guys right now, bro. I'm really opening up right now. I feel good. After that whole intervention, after that whole, like, you know, talking about how we feel, I think I'm going to become vulnerable. I've been going through some stuff, and it's been really deeply affecting me. I I'm, I just got to I gotta say this, and I, I, I'm sick of the fact that so many people judge me on this every single day, and they don't realize how hard it is for me. Every day when I wake up, and I, I look I look up to the ceiling and I think I have another hole in the ceiling. There's too I am just too big meated. There's too much meat that I have right now. And there are men that are just walking around with nothing, you know, guys that don't have anything at all. And maybe three inches or even ten under ten inches. And I, here I am, you know, not even I can't even measure it, to be honest. I mean, I don't have enough there's not a measuring tape in the world that's even big enough. I have to come out and I have to say it. I'm vulnerable. Uh, I don't have to tell you guys. Being as big meated as I am, it's a very vulnerable position. What are we talking about? Why are we talking about this shit, dude? Why are we crying on a podcast about this shit? Is it really that deep? Just lose weight. Stop being so fat and then move. There yet. I think we do need more of that. Oh my god, I fucking hate this shit. I already hate it. I already hate the we do need more. Why are we extending shit so heavily? I think we do need more of that in media and we need more women signed that are, you know, that size of 22 plus. Dang. But I think if I'm one of those women that can make it easier for the girls that are coming up behind me. So you're basically just saying like, yo, listen, um, let me let me become this model. Let me get the bag. And then like all the other, you know, all the other women behind me, maybe they can use me as motivation. I mean, I'm like basically a hero at this point for all the plus size women out there. Let me just put me in a position to make money. Like I really think that I deserve money. I am fat. But like if you guys push me up here, I would really love money. I think money is good. I love that shit actually. I'll take that. I'll take the money. And you guys could look at me as like a hero as I was, you know, I mean, I am a hero. So like, just put me up there, by the way. Like, again, I think that's my purpose. That's what I want to be doing. Like, where I could see that we could push forward with the boundaries a little bit more. I don't even understand what you're talking about. Like, we're going to push forward with the boundaries, what, of the gut? Like, what are you talking about? Because the fatter they are, the more it's, like, better. It's, like, more diverse or whatever. Like, what are we talking about? It's just having more of those, like, larger bodies in ad campaigns, in uh, e-com. Because when I'm shopping, I like to see, like, my body. When That's I only really, like, dude, what are you shopping for exactly where you need to see your body? Like, how often are you going clothes shopping? I feel like these people over dramatize. Like, how often are you looking at, like, models for clothes or whatever? I don't even look... Half the time when I go to stores and I see a dude modeling clothes, he's gay. Like, almost all the time. I'm looking at that guy. I'm like, that guy is gay. There's no way he's smiling that hard while wearing those booty shorts, bro. That dude's gay as hell. Or they'll have two dudes right next to each other, like, basically arm to arm touching each other. Like, that's gay as shit. I'm not even... You think I'm identifying with these gay dudes, bro? No, I'm not. I'm not even really looking at them, to be honest. Like, I don't... Do, I, it's just so weird something. I remember I was, like, at a store, and there was a woman that came up with, like, a... a like an air mattress, right? And there was a guy that was on the air mattress and he was like smiling so fucking hard. And I'm thinking like nobody was ever this happy about ever sleeping on an air mattress. This guy's a fucking liar. So most of these ad campaigns are already exaggerations of the truth to begin with. Nobody gives a fuck, okay? Like what are you shopping for for where you need to see like representation for whatever? Like are you watching like Oreo ads and going, man, where are the fucking fat black ladies in this Oreo ad, bro? I need fucking... Give me some fat black ladies. I need that shit right now. Or like, what are you like going to fucking the stu the supermarket? What do you want to see? Like, fucking a fat black woman drinking sweet baby rays? Like, what? Where do we need this represent? Why? Why do we need so much representation for random shit? Is it just for clothes? Please specify that because like, how often are you going clothes shopping? I go sh I go clothes shopping like every two years, bro. It's like. Maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about, okay? I know that women buy more clothes than men. I get it. But, like, is it really that big of a deal to where you need to look up at, like, different posters and see, like, fat black ladies or stuff like that? What, what about, like, fat Indonesian women? Can we see that too? Fat Indonesian men. I also want big fat men with big guts with mustaches. That's what I want to. I want that too. Can we talk about that? We're not gonna, when I go clothes shopping, I'm sick of seeing very, very ambiguously 
uh, uh, relation to men. I, I, I'm sick of seeing it. I don't know if these guys are gay or not. Probably are gay. Their skincare is amazing. They have nothing on their face in terms of uh, d defects. They got to be gay, right? Um, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of going in there with the prospect of maybe being bricked up looking at these androgynous men because they look way too feminine to be actual, like, heterosexual men. Why am I getting an erection looking at this guy? Why the most attractive people on posters are men? And I'm looking at fat women on posters and I'm going, that's disgusting. This guy, though, I shouldn't have to question my home. I shouldn't have to question my heterosexuality when I go into retail stores. I'm you know, trying to look at outfits and stuff, not someone that has like an ideal, you know. This woman doesn't have a single thought behind her eyes, dude. Plus body or whatever you want to call yeah. it, you know. Yeah, and quite frankly, that's why influencers took over so much is because yeah. influencers diversified what we saw for clothing. And I know a lot of people that follow me specifically want to see what the items look like. A lot of people will buy from brands because they see it on me and they have more belief that it will work for them yeah keep bragging keep bragging yeah. versus seeing it on whatever you know model got a lot of arm hair right there dude that might be more than me they choose for their their site believe me when i say i don't buy your stuff until i've seen it on an influencer i've seen it on a friend mm -hmm. because the models and the model choices are not pulling me and then whenever we do have moments where they are like that rap dolls moment i'm like Oh shit. Add to cart, add, add to cart, cart, add to cart, add to cart. Yeah. I want this girl. I want this girl on the podcast. She makes great faces. We're pitching to brands, Just right? Her. And I I have found myself in the last year or so, I've been pitching hard to like hotels and really any kind of like travel, right? Mm -hmm. I, I pitched to restaurants, right? And we have done some restaurant collaborations. People yeah, like, what the fuck are you, re like, can you imagine showing up at a hotel and just seeing like big posters of fat women when you walk in? Like, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, inclusivity in hotels what are, where why what are you talking about like hotel.com you open it up and it's just like the whole page is just fat women what are you talking about where am i going why what are you talking about what kind of advertisement are you talking about at a hotel what airplanes because i don't understand like we have money to spend right that is a crazy ass thing to say when it's not your money. What do you mean we have money to spend? Who are you putting we into this, bro? Just because you spend your money doesn't mean other companies want to spend their money on ad campaigns for fat women that don't even make sense. Right? We have money to spend, mm -hmm. but I don't see myself in your marketing. I yeah, don't, but they don't. Okay, whatever. I don't dude. see myself at your luxury resort. I don't see. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, uh, you're looking up going on vacations and you're upset that you don't see fat women on the vacation spots? Yeah, because they don't leave the house. There's a reason why you don't see them. Myself in your cushy hotel. Like, I don't see myself in any of your... Is this really, like, the determining factor on whether or not you're going to stay in a hotel? Like, you're sitting there outside, like, the airport, and you're going, like, I need a hotel real quick. And the only hotel I'm going to, I need to make sure that they have a fat woman on the front page of their website. So, nope, 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 nope. You're, just, you're never going to find a hotel. Why are you even concerned with that? What you, The entire purpose of a hotel is to just go there and sleep and leave the next day. You're not trying. Why do you care if there's fat women at the... What are you talking about? Why? Why is this such a big deal to you? I, what do you... Why, though? Like, it's so weird. Like, the clothes make sense. Hotels? Marketing. And I would love to see myself in your marketing. It's such like, uh, but you're you're really barking up the wrong tree right now. Like the hotel executives are like, can you like where you think any hotel executives are like, dude, I, I'm sick of the, I'm sick of every time we open up our website. I'm not seeing a single diverse member of the plus size community on our front page. This is actually incredible. We need to diversify. We need to stand up for equality. This is actually a red flag. Get fat women on the front cover. I don't care how big. Double the size, whatever. How old, How much is that? How much is that one right there? 150? Quadruple it. We need women that can't even walk. Get a woman in a wheelchair. Stand her up. I don't care. Stand her up. Pay her whatever she wants. How much is she asking for? Never mind. We don't want anything to do with these women. They're too expensive. And the picture that we took of this woman is taking up five pictures that we would have taken up if it was just a conventionally woman. As you start being able to have these conversations with your, your plus size friends or your fat friends, you can start having them with your straight size friends because now it's like, okay, this can be up for discussion. This is true.
A hundred percent. If you know you're about to have a conversation with somebody and you need to prepare for that particular conversation, it's really good to ask your friends and go, hey man, uh, I have this question and I was wondering if you can help me in a particular scenario and I think that these are going to be some questions that I think you should ask me and I can respond and just make it more free-for-all. It's really good, by the way, to, if you're ever going to do that. If you think you're going to ever be in like a, a moment where you can have an argument or a conversation, it's really good to be prepared so you have talking points prepared. But in this particular scenario, it doesn't make any sense because they're basically just saying like talk to your fat friends about being fat so you can argue with your thin friends about being fat. Like mm -hmm. I can share this aspect of, of myself with them and they might have that moment of I've never thought of that. But it is so important. And it, have you ever thought of that? Like you're literally. Okay. I don't want to like downplay the like emotional work it takes because you're putting yourself on the line to be like heard. And, and of course, the trusted friends you've mm -hmm. had for a long time, it makes it a little bit easier. But when we have to tell people like, hey, this experience, it seems innocuous to you. Like it actually is like a, I have to think logically. I have to think emotionally. I have to prepare for an asshole next to me on the plane. Like it is a very tense tense experience for me that i have to navigate and when we can be on but like what are you talking about like you just have to go to your friends and be like i'm really like i'm really self-conscious right now like i have to take a flight and i don't know if there's gonna be a person next to me that doesn't like that i'm like 250 and i'm like interfering with their feet like if i was your friend i'd be like what are you talking about dude like what dude lose some fucking weight you're fat as shit if you're always like that would be literally my conversation with my friend like hey bro i'm just having a really big problem like I have to take a flight, and I don't know, like, the person that I'm going to sit next to. I don't know if they're going to like the fact that, like, I'm going to have more gut, and it's going to, like, kind of go over to the next seat. I'd literally be like, dude, what are you – why is this even an issue for you, bro? Lose – you're fat as fuck, bro. Lose some fucking weight. God damn, you really having that issue right now? Really? Damn, bro. You must have gained a hell of a lot of weight. Go to the gym, bro. What do you do? You get no bitches, bro. You're busted right now. You smell like must perpetually. That's what I would be telling my friend. Lose some fucking weight. What are you doing right now? That's the honest response. And that's probably the response that you probably should need in that scenario. If you're literally over here having like a, a mental breakdown with your friend about whether or not you're going to like have a mental collapse on the plane because the person next to you doesn't like sitting next to a fat person. Jesus Christ. It's so what's such a weird thing to even talk about. Honest about that. And it's received it makes so much more up for discussion. I also have some best friends since middle school and they are straight sized and they are, I, I've had to teach myself I can have those conversations with others and I had to teach myself I can have those conversations with them and it has only enhanced my relationship with them oh, to 100%. be able to be honest about my experiences. What the fuck are we talking about right now? I don't like this woman, dude. She doesn't say much. She just says a whole bunch of words and they're just meaningless. Please stop talking. A couple years ago, I went to my very first Charlotte Plus event and... <sighs> This is my favorite person, but she does be saying some cringy ass shit every once in a while, dude. It really like, that was the first time that I ever got to talk about airplane seats and and mm -hmm. what products we're using to, to not chafe in between our legs and like without yeah. feeling ashamed or embarrassed or anything. Cause it was, mm -hmm. it was a universal experience that I had never talked right. about before. I guess dude, but it's such a bizarre thing to talk about, bro. You guys have some different issues, dude. Like, you guys are literally out here having discussions on, like, which products to use so you don't chafe so hard and how to navigate plus-size capacity seats. And why don't you guys just lose weight? Like, why is this such a thing for you guys? Like, it seems like an easy solution. And, and yeah. like you said, like, it, it is stuff that, yeah, people don't think about. It's also stuff we... Yeah, because it's such a bizarre thing. Like, why are you even putting yourself in a category like this? You don't have to be fat never got to talk about mm -hmm. right and i think it makes you feel so seen too and yeah. it doesn't make you feel different i think i always went through life not not wanting to feel different and not wanting to feel like i stood out i was born to stand out i was going <laughs> bro are we competing for cringe meter right now like how fucking why are you guys so cringy bro you guys are like literally 35 40 years old and your cringe meters are off the chart I right now i'm not wanting to feel like i stood out i was born to stand out true you were born to stand out but not stand up i was gonna say I love you that. stand out and and i bro well, can we get this yes queen out of here bro get out of this shit bro i don't like you bro you're so why are you not she just said some cringy shit. Can you at least call her out on that? Can you at least go, <laughs> whoa. Okay, first of all, that was really cringe. Can you, guys, like, calm down on that cringe? Anyway, let's go back to the conversation. Like, just say that. That Whatever she just said right there was really crazily cringe. And you didn't call her out on that. You're getting an F on that. I think yeah. it's... You actually contributed to that. That shit was cringe. I mean, listen, that, that response was crazy, bro. Stand out. I was going to say, I love you that. stand out. And, and I think yeah. it's 
a value, right? But I, I absolutely get that that thing of like a teen, as a teen, you just want to be normal. You want to fit in, the, the sense of belonging, right? But the thing is, is when you stand out, you do belong. You just belong with other standouts. We've shared before. Defeats the whole fucking purpose, dude. That defeats the whole fucking purpose, man. If the purpose was, I don't want to stand out and I want to be included. And you're, you, you basically say, yes, you stand out, but you're included in people that stand out. That's not the fucking point. That's... Bro, I don't like this woman at all, dude. She's just completely missed the point and she cringed it out. Man, oh my god. Or that each of us have different timelines of when we've gone publicly fat. Uh I have no, bro, what is this publicly fat? You do realize that you are fat. Like, it's not how that works. You can't just be like, I, I'm like privately fat. What do you mean? Pri how do you get privately fat? Like, if you're 450, what do you think is happening when you go outside? You think it's not, You think people are like, uh, like when you take off your jacket, and you, you, you know what I'm saying? And you're just like, guys, guess what? I'm coming out. I'm fat. And the people are going to go, what? Oh, my God. Are you serious? You're fat? Oh, my God. I would never have known. That's so crazy. Cheryl, I can't believe that you're coming out as public. I knew you were fat. I looked at you. I have eyes. I knew you were fat when you walked in. Your gut came in before you did. What do you, what, what does publicly fat even mean? I'm the oldest public fat. <laughs> the OG? Yep. <laughs> Alyssa's the newest to talking about I'm being fat. I'm just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> just a little baby baby. It's all a step in the right direction. Yeah. I can agree with that. And um, industry, look at how much conversation is generated by having actors and different body types on your shows isn't this what you want people to talk about your shows people to be thinking about them having dialogue about them yeah but it's in the wrong way like you're you're getting people to talk about the shit in the wrong direction there is such thing as bad publicity like if you want <sighs> yes i agree like people are talking about your show like people are you know word of mouth is really really good but if the only word of mouth is yo this movie got a whole bunch of fab bitches in it and is really bad because they didn't know how to write them and it seems like they just diversity hired everybody that's not the same as like hey bro the new wolverine movie is like really good dude i've really like you jackman coming back for this role like deadpool was great like there's a difference you know what i'm saying like it's sure it's publicity regardless and it may be beneficial because people are now talking about your shit but it's not good publicity. It's just publicity in the, the other direction. I, yeah, whatever, bro. Like, these women are fucking... These women are dense. It's what you want. People to talk about your shows. People to be thinking about them. Having dialogue about them. So maybe when everyone looks the same, it's not that interesting. I'm gonna spiral. Let's go. <laughs> Is that a turtleneck? Yeah. And I'm gonna bring you along with me. We love that. Boop, boop. So as buckle I'm in, let her off the leash, buckle she's in, buckle up. <laughs> so as I'm sitting at my computer, doing research for this episode, and pulling up statistics, I find something that the CDC released in 2009. Oh, so cringe. I'm the CDC released a quote obesity cost calculator. What is that? A, is that a bracelet? What is that? Is that a break? Why is it so damn? That shit is literally glued to your skin, man. That shit might as well be tattooed on. Released a, quote, obesity cost calculator. Oh. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I know where this is going. Wait. Insurance premiums for a company. Well, yeah, there is an obesity cost. Like, you guys do cost more money. You guys are going to the hospital more. You guys do have more medical conditions. You guys do require more shit. So, yeah. I mean, literally in the UK, you guys are having a crisis right now because the health insurance being subsidized and, like, there are tons of fat people literally just going into the hospital, like, all the time for their medical conditions due to being fat. So, yeah, that is a thing. I don't know why you guys are upset about that. That's, yeah, it's, no, that's, the, yeah, it's true. Is money, to money, tally money. the financial losses linked to their overweight employees. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that makes sense. You guys ain't working as fat. Yeah, 100%, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys don't work as much, bro. That's, I mean, let's be honest here for a second. I'm not saying fat people don't work, but there's a reason why fat people can't really apply to jobs where they can't stand up for long periods of time. And, you know, like they may not be able to, you know, do as much compared to thinner people because you guys are literally like being weighed down by the gravity of the earth. So I'm not even there yet. I'm not even there yet. I'm going to spiral more. So it's called Lean Works. Lean Works. Lean Works. And it stands for, for leading employees to activity 
and nutrition. The okay. website provides various resources to employers, including an obesity cost calculator, estimate the total costs associated with obesity, and determine annual obesity-related medical costs for their companies. Two, information and resources to help employers plan, build, um, and assess interventions to combat obesity intervention and, and that's the word they use that's the word I, I, bro, I don't like this woman dude oh oh, oh. okay <laughs> bro what is this bro what is going on right now get this shit out of my fucking face bro you can't listen you can't wear a necklace if you don't got a neck you can't wear a turtleneck if you don't got a neck okay Let's be honest here for a second. I don't know what's going on. Why are you buying socks if you don't got likes? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, dude. That's all I'm saying, dude. Anyway, we're going to end the video here. Let me know what you guys think down below about this particular, this episode of Fat Acceptance Podcast. It's cringe. It's quite cringe. These individuals themselves are apex cringe. Omega level cringe, if if you will. Like, if, it was, if, Nick, Fur if Nick Fury was alive in the MCU, they'd be classifying these people as Omega level cringe. They'd be like, oh, we gotta do something about this, dude. We gotta, we gotta send in the X-Force. We gotta send the Avengers on this one. Because these guys are on some different level of cringe. And usually women aren't cringe, usually. Because women are like really good in social situations. But this particular group of women is like exceptionally cringe. Uh, <laughs> crazy cringe, matter of fact. But anyway, we're gonna end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in barbecue sauce or just BBQ because I have it next to me because I eat a lot of chicken. And because I eat a lot of chicken, I have to have the barbecue sauce next to me because I do season it. But sometimes you need a little bit of that extra sweet baby rays. And I got a lot of black friends and they tell me, listen, David, if you want to make sure that your chicken is always well lubricated and edible, Get the barbecue sauce. That is the way to go. And listen, they're black guys. They know what they're talking about when it comes to barbecue sauce, dude, right? Am I talking about you? Have you ever been to a black guy cookout? They got barbecue sauce on like literally everything. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to end the video here, guys. Um, I love every single one of you. Thank you so much for being here. I just spending the time that you did today watching this exceptional cringe. Your durability is peak. Your durability is actually paramount. You have the ability to stand here, listen to this shit, and look at this face and tolerate it stay here and that's beautiful that's amazing i celebrate you thank you so much for having that durability the tolerance and the desirability to stay with me for this entire length of time i really do appreciate you thank you for supporting me i really 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 love you thank you so much if you want to check out my social medias will be linked down below in the description enjoy the rest of your day guys